Hi team, welcome to another week of being on the journey with Kalia to really find joy in life and just the day-to-day -day things. It's easy to find joy on a fabulous holiday or on something that really happens that's amazing. Actually finding joy in the little things and finding joy in our life so that day by day we're actually really valuing that we're here and we're living and we're contributing rather than always living in the future or wishing that we had this greatness that was constantly happening. So Kalia, welcome. Great to see you again. Thank you for just you and the courage to share your journey with us. Thanks for having me again. So let's just talk about happiness because that's something that I think we use the word constantly, we want it, and yet it's an emotion. And so if we think of our emotions, they're very fickle or fleeting, or, you know, we certainly don't want to build a whole life on something that we don't even have any control over because one minute we can be happy and the next minute we cannot be happy and it's really frustrating from that perspective. So I like to think of emotions like hunger pains in terms of, you know, when I get a hunger pain, if I can feed myself, then it's like that pain goes away and it shows up again in a couple of hours. So it's not like, you know, when I feed it, it disappears forever and ever. I have to really learn to constantly be feeding myself and taking care of myself. So if we think of emotions as that gift of really taking care of ourself. So when it shows up, how can I really feed my soul? in a way that makes me feel satisfied and then go on and live life. And then when it shows up again, just know that I'm hungry again for something really significant and what matters rather than trying to be like, oh my gosh, I ate a meal today. Why am I hungry again tomorrow? Right? Like it's just part of life. So what shows up for you when you think about just that journey of happiness? Yeah. Um, this is definitely something I've been struggling with. I think like being in Puerto Rico and having all of these amazing things around me that aren't when it's not related to my performance in volleyball. So like going on my 10 walks or my jungle walks or just like looking out of my window right now and seeing like the forest and the clouds and the sky like that feeds me. And then I get to volleyball and forget to eat and it's hard for me to acknowledge that like these emotions are fleeting and everything will pass which is also like very interesting for me because I have a tattoo that says this too shall pass and it's for that um to remember that both the good and the bad are fleeting so like when things are going well, I need to anchor in gratitude and really appreciate that. And then when things are going bad, I may have to feed my soul and take care of myself a little bit more. Um, it's just, um, for me, it's hard to get myself out of the dark parts because they do just seem very overwhelming and I seem so hungry at times and the cafeteria is not open <laughs> i don't know how to describe it um but there yeah, is no food in sight right it's like it's it's just nowhere yeah um so i just want to really work on that for myself and i'm committed to working on feeding myself even when I don't know. I feel like I'm good at feeding myself when I'm not hungry. Yeah. And when I get hungry, that's when things get harder. So Clea, great observation. And I just want to bring up the new thinking of that's about our identity. So when you talk about that, you can have great joy and happiness on your walks and, you know, just the things that really are personal to you that's normal because you're literally not hungry at the time, right? Because I mean, it's like you're walking and you know that you can have breakfast if you need it. Now I'm literally talking about feeding ourselves. So, you know, you're not hungry when you know the food is always there. But the minute we say you can't have any food today or you're fasting or we don't know when you'll be able to eat again, aren't you just starving? I mean, all of a sudden it's like there's this and it's a hunger that is fear-based because you're really afraid what's going to happen. 
And yeah. so I want you to hold those different just experiences as you think about it, because whenever you're in your personal life and you're managing, you know that you can somewhat eat whenever you want and you have control. When it's time to go to volleyball, all of a sudden you could feel out of control and you could feel as if you're, you know, the food's all being taken away and you don't know when you'll eat again. We're kind of mixing some metaphors here, but I just, <laughs> I just want to show you that when it becomes about your identity and you feel like you don't have control, it feels really powerful. Yeah. And I also think like with me, sometimes I get in a mindset of like, I don't deserve to eat or I don't deserve to feed my soul. Like after I'm watching like my film after practice yesterday and I had just like a really tough practice mentally with the dark thoughts in my head and stuff like that and sometimes it's like literally physically eating I'm like I don't deserve to eat I don't want to and then other times it's like the spiritual eating like I don't deserve to go outside and like look at the ocean because that would make me feel better and I don't know if I allow myself to feel better sometimes. And what are you getting out of making yourself stay inside your pain and your darkness? I think like, like the logical answer is like, I'm not getting anything. It makes me worse, but I think when I'm doing it, it feels genuine. <laughs> like it feels like I'm this bad person. So like these bad things should be happening to me. I don't deserve to be happy if I didn't perform well. So if we were really honoring you and your competitive spirit to be great and be competitive, if you don't live up to the standard of excellence that you have for yourself, is it necessarily a bad thing that you are challenging yourself to be better? Could we hold it differently if we thought of it as more of you really wanting your greatness versus you punishing yourself? Yeah, I, yeah, I, and once again, I do appreciate and I acknowledge that I would rather be, I don't know, I think like it is sometimes like a natural thing. Some people just like are higher achievers than others. Right. I've learned that through sports and all the different um, girls and teammates that I've met. Like some girls just like don't care about winning or losing or pushing themselves as much. I think I saw it more at like younger levels, definitely. Now it's most people are in it to be right. in it for the passion, but I'm happy that I'm one of those people who pushes myself and I compete, but I don't want to take away my own joy. And like, I'm in Puerto Rico, I'm doing amazing things. I'm getting paid to play volleyball. Like that is absolutely amazing. And sometimes I feel like I lose the appreciation for that because I'm so, like result oriented and I take my own joy away from myself. So Kalia, thank you for just that honesty of really you being your worst enemy and you being the one that's really stealing your joy. I think that's a great truth that competitors really wrestle with is that, you know, people try to be, they try to say things like you should be really happy or you should be really grateful. And yet you're receiving it from a place of your competitiveness. And so that isn't true for you because you feel like that value comes when you perform at the level that you want for yourself. Yeah. I also, something else I like battle with is like, sometimes I'll come to like my friends, more like my friends with you and like professionals and my coaches, it's different, but like acquaintances and stuff like that, I'll tell them like, gosh, I just feel like the worst person in the world or like, I don't know, things like that. And sometimes I feel like people just want 
to like build me up, which I appreciate, but it's not what I'm looking for. Um, it doesn't like matter how many times like my teammates would tell me you're amazing or like, no, your passing really is great or your hitting is good. You're working on things, acknowledge that. I'm like not looking for the compliments. And sometimes I get, I'm like, I don't know what I am. I am looking for by telling people how bad I'm feeling because like it doesn't make me feel better when they just compliment me or things like that. Um, but also like being able to receive that is something I want to grow in. Well, what I really value about our conversation is just that the skill of truth is that when I listen to you, I feel or I think it's so beautiful because you're like mind and body and spirit. You're like, you're, you know, your Kalia, who is designed to be really competitively great, is resisting people saying, oh, you're doing fine. Oh, because you you don't believe it. It's not the truth. And there's a great saying, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So you shall yeah. know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So what I feel like when people are saying those compliments, I really respect that your truth is saying that's not true according to your definition. And this is what's so beautiful about life is that we want to live our life according to our definitions, because that's really what we have the power to do. So if your definition of you being a volleyball player is a standard of excellence that's measurable according to you, then thank you for really not settling for being less than that. And thank you for having the courage to wrestle with the, you know, dissatisfaction of not achieving your definition of success. Mm -hmm. What I don't want is I don't want you living by somebody else's definition of success and you angry at yourself because you're not fulfilling somebody else's definition of success. You have no power over that. Do you feel the difference? Mm -hmm. I do. And like that lands for me, to like changing vision of successes. But like, once again, I've done so many repetitions right. with this certain definition right. um, and to change that, like, it's not getting 40 kills a game. It's like working on my shots and trying new things and getting better and improving is what um, is is a more not only like attainable but just like it feels better to like work in that way and not have everything be so performance based mm -hmm. but like once again I just like like we talked about Kobe Bryant earlier and like if Kobe was doing badly I like would love to know like not just bad for Kobe, but like Kobe objectively doing badly in a game. Like I would just love to know like what his thoughts were and his mindset is because I think as a professional athlete, like, yes, it can be about getting better. And like, I want that to be my definition of success. But at the end of the day, like people are paying me to score points. And like, that is part of the job description. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just battling with that. So Kalia, I so wish that Kobe was here. Uh, the whole world wishes that Kobe was here and that we could just really get his words of wisdom. And again, another example of somebody just living an amazing life and gone in just a moment. And there's so many things that we wish we knew and that we're so different. And so I certainly can't speak for Kobe and do wish he was here. I will just share what I feel um, is what I know is that really being competitively great for you so that whenever you're not performing at the level that you want, can you use that competitiveness that right now is somewhat working against you because you're upset with your performance and you're really going down to the dark side of our competitiveness can you harness it in a way that you are fighting for you and fighting for your performance and fighting for the Kalia that is your definition of success with being able to do your job at the highest level, whatever that job description is? Because when I think about a Kobe or the great people that I've 
been able to know and, and to talk to, that's been the way that they use it is instead of trying to be different than who you are, they've really made peace and really understood their drive and their intensity and they use it on themselves. Like they make themselves be the standard of excellence and it's intense. Mm -hmm. So it's not some casual journey, right? Like we bring our intense self with us always. So I don't know great competitively great people who turn it off and on. They are like that all the time. And so I think that's can mm -hmm. be a misunderstanding is that it's like, we love when you go out and you're super competitive on the volleyball court, or basketball court, but when you come home, we want you to be fun and light. And all, it's like, how does that work exactly? So it can be very, very confusing. Yeah. Like once again, I completely agree. And that is the journey that I'm on right now. Um, having patience for myself is definitely the biggest opportunity um, mm -hmm. performance barrier um, that I have. And like, I am someone like, I know I battle with if I'm not just in volleyball, but in life, like if I'm performing or if I'm being genuine to like who I am and being authentic and I love being authentic to myself. Like for example, with my emotions, I am, I have very high highs and very low lows, but I've been in places like when you're really depressed and you're on medication and like they, those meds will even out the highs and the lows. And I do remember thinking like, wow, I miss how happy I used to be. Um, and now I love when I'm happy, <laughs> love when I'm happy, but dealing with the sadness and like the frustration and like shame that I feel sometimes about myself is um, where I know I have a lot of work, but also like knowing that's genuine to me mm -hmm. makes me feel a little better. And that like, that's something that like, Kobe or all these great competitors had to deal with is just like competing with yourself. Yeah, really. And actually for you versus with yourself, like compete for you, because yeah. if you compete for you, not only are you feeding your soul and really taking, you know, nurturing you and being in such a supportive way, the benefit is the whole world benefits, right? I mean, that it's like all of a sudden you're connected to something so much bigger than you because you're able to now contribute in a way that is, it's full of you authentically. So like, you can't give the world, you can't give your team, you can't give your friends or partners anything you don't have. So mm -hmm. if we can fill up that authentic Kalia with everything that's you, the good, the bad, the happy, the sad, and respect it, so when you're happy, it's not like you're like, why am I being happy? I shouldn't be happy. It's like you're in that moment and you enjoy it. But as soon as you're not happy, all of a sudden it goes into this dark space of analyzing. And what if we were just able to respect it and be like, okay, in the darkness, I'm going to be competitively great for me. Find mm -hmm. my way out of this, find my way to be better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I had, I'm like watching film of that and last night. Once again, it was a hard night, just like feeling like I shared with you earlier and I'll share with anyone watching. Like when I do bad at volleyball, I like had this thought that I was like, I just want to kill myself. I, it like that is easier for me to like deal with and admit than the fact that I'm doing badly. Um, and I like said that and my like teammates knew I have this one teammate who's just like really great. Um, and she was like, just let it go. You're fine. And she like kept telling me that. And then like, I, instead of like screaming or like mumbling under my breath, curse words, like I usually do, she was like, what are you thinking, Clea? And I was like, I'm just going to shut up and work. And I like, didn't say anything after that and just like focused on myself which like felt better and like felt less dramatic to like be doing all of that stuff. But then I just battle with like, I know 
my teammate like sees me so quiet and that makes her a little uncomfortable but like also like I need to I need to make sure I'm good before I can support anyone else so it's just like those battles that I have in my head all the time (laughs) about like what I should be doing or and once again the should word like yeah And what would it feel like if instead of all the shoulds, you were like, what do I need right now? And really give you what you need, because as soon as you have what you need, you're going to be able to give it to anybody else that needs something. But without you full, we can't really share you with anyone. I do think that is a question I should start posing to myself. I've been like working on asking myself, is it true? But asking myself what I need is something that um, like feels good to hear right now and think about. And I would like to see if I could do that at practice today. Okay. So we'll use that as this week's commitment. Mm-hmm. Since we're doing the whole food analogy thing, we might as well just finish fabulous with the food thing. So mm-hmm. when you ask yourself, what do you need? Think about you're at a restaurant and we read this fabulous menu, right? Don't you kind of check with yourself to be like, what am I hungry for? And then you read mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, that sounds delicious. Or like, oh, I would like that, but I want to change this and change that. I mean, it actually is an enjoyable experience to go to a mm-hmm. restaurant or to go to the refrigerator or whatever and connect to ourselves, and then ask ourselves, what is it that we want or what do we need? And then enjoy the journey of like tasting it and seeing how it feels and enjoy the satisfaction of it. Yeah. So can we practice that this week in terms of every time that you are feeling bad or feeling like you're not being the competitively great Kalia that you want to be instead of focusing on the bad. Can you ask yourself what you need? Yeah. And then I really do. think of it, you know, like that, that menu at the restaurant to be like, well, do I need this or do I need that? And trying it with the same grace and just, you know, the, the fun and the adventure of exploring rather than such a darkness that it has to happen. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I think also recognizing like what my menu items are um, and that they like may change based on the season. (laughs) Or based on the day. I mean, we don't eat the same food every day, right? So, I mean, that's actually Mm -hmm. the fun of food is that you can have an amazing breakfast and in three or four hours, you get some more fabulous food. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it can be this real joy adventure of finding exactly what you said, like what is on my menu? What's on my menu when I'm at volleyball? What's on my menu in my personal life? Now we're actually finding some joy rather than it being a dark space that we have to conquer. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um, And I'm excited to work on that. Okay. So I think it's all about feeding your soul this week, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. finding what you want to put on your menu. Who knows? Maybe we're opening a restaurant in life. (laughs) Yeah, that has been on my list actually of things to do. Well, let's start with the life restaurant and start (laughs) to figure out the menus for breakfast, lunch, dinner, personal life, professional life, philanthropic life. Who knows? We might be on to something. I'm excited. Uh, Thank you, Kalia. And thank you for letting us just talk about your journey and uh, the fun of food and feeding our souls. So here we go. Okay, team, it's up to you. Go out and be a champion for you. Win your well-being. And it sounds like this week we're practicing finding out what's on your life menu, what do you need in your personal life, your professional life, and just enjoy feeding you and your soul. Thank you, Kalia. Thank you. Bon appetit. (laughs) 